Hello everyone and welcome to Marvelous Dentistry. In this video, we'll talk about classification system for mandibulectomy. Firstly, we'll start off with what actually is mandibulectomy and then talking about how this system of classification of mandibulectomy is actually used in dentistry. So, let's get started. Now, firstly, talking about what actually is mandibulectomy, if we divide this word into two parts, mandible is your jawbone which is your mandible and ectomy means removal so mandibulectomy means removal of mandible but there are different variations to as to how mandible is removed so either some part of mandible can be removed or some segment of the mandible can be removed or the entire mandible can be removed now these different variations of mandibulectomy depends on the actual pathology that is present in the mandible which either suggests that part segment or the entire mandible should be removed as suggested by the surgeon now there are different causes to as to why mandibulectomy is performed the most common of them being there is some neoplasm either benign or malignant neoplasm there is some severe infection or there is some trauma and that trauma led to some bone being so necrotic that it cannot be saved and in some cases there can be some congenital causes as well now these mandibulectomy procedures are most commonly performed by an oral and maxillofacial surgeons. Now talking about which actual classification system of mandibulectomy is used, the actual classification system was suggested by Cantor and Curtis. They suggested a classification system for mandibulectomy and this classification system of Cantor and Curtis is most commonly used in prosthetic rehabilitation of edentulous and partially edentulous patients. Now talking in detail about Cantor and Curtis's classification of mandibulectomy, there are basically six classes. As you can see in this picture, these are the six different variations suggested by Cantor and Curtis when performing mandibulectomy depending on the pathology that is present in the mandible. So we'll talk about each of them in detail. Now firstly talking about class 1 of Cantor and Curtis's classification of mandibulectomy, in this case you can see this is the mandible. And you can see a part of the mandible has been resected or you can say it has been removed. So describing class 1, it's radical alveolectomy. Alveolar, this, this is your alveolar process and alveolectomy means some part of your alveolar process of the mandible is removed. So radical alveolectomy with preservation of mandibular continuity. Now what do we mean by preservation of mandibular continuity? It means that the mandible is continuous. There is no break or there is no space between the parts of mandible so it's a continuous bone but only some part of your alveolar process is removed when this is case it's known as class 1 of Cantor and Curtis's classification of mandibulectomy now when performing such mandibulectomy there are certain structures that are removed or restricted when doing this procedure firstly the alveolar process is removed the lingual and buccal sulcus mucosa is also removed because it's present in this way some part of mylohyoid muscle is also removed because mylohyoid muscle is that muscle which forms the floor of the mouth. So it is also resected and lingual and inferior alveolar nerves are also you know damaged because they run in this direction over here. So there are some chances not always there is a chance that lingual and inferior alveolar nerves are also damaged and removed when doing this procedure. And finally, in some cases, if required, sublingual and some mandibular glands are also removed. Now, moving on towards class 2, class 2 suggests that there is lateral resection of mandible distal to the cuspid. Cuspid is your canine, and you can see in this case, this side of the mandible is intact, but this is where the canine is present, and then distal to the canine, all of these structures are removed. So, when this is the case, it's class 2 of Cantor and Curtis's classification of mandibulectomy. Now again there are certain structures that are resected when doing this procedure. It's very obvious that condyle, ramus and body of the mandible in that part of the area is removed. You can see there is no condyle, ramus and body of mandible present. Mylohyoid and hypoglossal nerves are also resected. Palatoglossal muscle is also resected. Buccal and lingual sulcus mucosa is also removed because it comes in the place of surgery and in some cases sublingual and submandibular glands are also removed but it's not necessary that all of these structures are removed when performing this 
uh, surgery all the time but they, there are chances that these structures are to be removed when performing this surgery now moving on towards class 3 of Cantus and Curtis's mandibular ectomy classification now there is lateral dissection of the mandible to the midline you can see this is the midline and adjacent to the midline the entire mandible has been now removed so when this is the case it's class 3 and again the structures are resected such as condyle, ramus and body of the mandible and these structures are pretty much similar which were removed when in, we were discussing class 2 such as myelohyoid, hypoglossal nerves, palatoglossal muscle, buccal and lingual sulcus of mucosa and then finally sublingual and submandibular glands class 4 is that case when lateral bone graft and surgical reconstruction of the mandible is performed you can see roughly towards the midline this entire structure of the mandible is removed but lateral bone graft has been placed over here and there is surgical reconstruction of this mandible and we use lateral bone and split thickness or pedicle graft when performing this reconstruction when we are talking about class 4 of Cantus and Curtis's classification of mandibulectomy. Class 5 is when anterior part of the mandible is removed but there is bone graft placed and there is surgical reconstruction. Now there again there are certain structures which are resected when performing this particular procedure such as anterior part of the mandible which you can see has been removed but bone graft has also been placed over it and there is some surgical reconstruction. Genioglossus and anterior belly of digastric has also been removed which are muscles which are attached in the anterior part. The genioglossus muscles present over the mental spine and the anterior belly of digastric present over the digastric fossa over here. Again, lingual and inferior alveolar nerves are also compromised because they are running in this direction. So there are chances that they will be damaged. Mucosa of the lower lip is also affected because if pathology is present anteriorly, there are chances that it might involve the lower lip. So in some cases, the mucosa of lower lip is also compromised and has to be removed. Mylohyoid and genuhyoid muscles bilaterally are removed because they form the mylohyoid forms the floor of the mouth. So bilaterally, it has to be removed and genuhyoid muscle again which is present on the mental spine inferiorly also has to be removed. Now the final class of Cantor and Curtis's classification of mandibulectomy is class 6. In this case anterior mandible is resected without reconstruction. In class 5 there was some reconstruction but in class 6 there is no re reconstruction as you can see this is the left part of the mandible this is the right part of the mandible the anterior part is missing over here there is no anterior part and it's not to be replaced because of any reason there is no reconstruction taking place and when this is the case it's class 6 of Cantor and Curtis's classification of mandibulectomy you can appreciate it very well that the mandibular con continuity is not restored there is some discontinuity present over here so this is class 6 so in this video we talked about Cantor and Curtis's classification of mandibulectomy and how this classification is most commonly used when we are planning prosthetic rehabilitation for edentulous and partially edentulous patients and how the different classes of this classification is present such as class 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6 and how some structures are resected when performing each of these surgery. So I hope this video was useful for you and if you like this video please like, share and subscribe and press the bell icon. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time.